this is a section view of the existing. You've got the eight foot sidewalk and you know, it's plus or minus, obviously, as you saw in the photo. Uh, we have a pipe lane, a class two if that gets you to and fro. Uh, we've got three lanes in each direction. So really that's kind of how uh, the existing is today in terms of the sections and his amendments. So during the time frame, uh, you know, a year or so ago, and we've been in this process for a little bit, is consultant KOA in the city went through existing investigation, uh, looked at some community input early on, uh, and it came up with basically four alternatives. And so these alternatives range from the alternative one, which is basically a, a sidewalk area and really a, a separated class two. It's got a two foot stripe buffer. And that's mimicked on the other side as well with a four foot median. The alternative two is similar to that. However, it now joins the sidewalk and bike lane and it has a three foot parkway. And then the, the median is wider than four feet, it went to six feet. Uh, the alternative three joins the two bike lane and the sidewalk, the shared use path. And then it also has a five foot median, which they call it a parkway really, uh, landscaped. You've got your three lanes, and then there's a six foot median with landscaping and trees. Same configuration on the other side. Uh, so it's really a complete street, if you will. Uh, alternative four. Uh, it's basically an upgrade, if you will, but it really shortens areas. It shows an 11 foot shared path versus the 10 that's in alternative three. Uh, has a five foot versus, you know, uh, the parkways are the same, but the median is shortened to four feet versus six with no trees in the median. So those four alternatives were presented at the February 26th public meeting, and we garnered input from the meeting. Uh, we also did the survey monkey that uh, had a lot of comments that came in. And so that brings us to today. So just to recap on the public meeting uh, on the 26th, we solicited input about 40 participants uh, came to the meeting and we, it was a great, great public meeting. Uh, we had a lot of good input from all the neighbors that are out there, the citizens that, that ride out there. Uh, looked at the four alternatives. We were able to have some discussions on, you know, uh, parts of the of the alternatives, which ones are good, positives, pluses, and minuses. And we we're able to at least narrow it down to what we think maybe is the preferred. Uh, we were also received 45 online survey responses. And a lot of the comments that came in, the, you know, it was there was a, a theme, if you will. Uh, you know, traffic concerns. You know, what's going on with traffic out there? Uh, safety, you know, we want to know is it is, is safety uh, for the transportation for the users to get in and out of the area uh, in a safe manner. Uh, questions came in about the existing well, the walls that are out there and the trees, you know, what's going to happen to the walls and trees. And then there was construction of where, you know, what's going to go on, how long, you know, what's the, you know, the impact in terms of the duration of pavement and removal and the disruption and noise. And so all good comments that came in at that time. So from the input, uh, both the meeting and also the survey monkey, we were able to compile all that data uh, for comments and you know preferreds and which one of the four was you know likely that better than the other. Uh, although you know they all oppose pluses and minuses, but based on all that, uh, the group at large uh, sort of migrated towards alternative three. And four was right there, you know, as a second, and then it dropped off to one. Uh, keep existing was not almost non-existent. So I think the the general consensus of the public is they want something to be done on Adams. Uh, so with that, uh, we're at a place in this product delivery to really make a decision of which way we want to go. And it's not the end. It, it really is the beginning still. It's the beginning of taking a alternative and going through the process of engineering and you know, backgrounds and updating it and getting some more feedback and really getting to the point where on paper, it really resembles what we wanted to see out there in the field. So a lot of the questions that came in really were, hey, we want a shared use path. 
you know. Uh, we want some nice trees in center. We want trees in the parkway. And we want a true separation between vehicles and bicycles and pedestrians. So those are the key points, but not all of them, but those are really the keys to this design venture. Uh, and those are all features that are part of this alternative three. So as you saw earlier in the slide, uh, alternative three, this is the cross section. It shows the shared path, uh, five and five, uh, five foot, uh, what I call is the parkway area. You've got your lanes, your through lanes. You've got three in each direction. You've got a six foot median landscaped with trees. And the same is holds true on the other side. And then the section AA, as you're seeing on the screen, this is when we get to the intersections with you know left turn pockets, et cetera, we have to get in across. And there's, there's several we have to cross and get into. So they'll have a little more uh, challenges, if you will, with the ADA and crosswalks, et cetera. But it's also an opportunity uh, to increase that area and to uh, make some beautifications and some sig signal modifications to help with the traffic flow. So with that narrative sense, uh, what you just saw on the screen, you know, we're gonna add some raised center medians and landscaping. Uh, we're gonna widen existing sidewalk area to provide a 10 foot shared use path uh, with a five foot bikeway, uh, five foot landscape parkway separating the travel lanes. So we have some good buffer there and some scenic corridor. Uh, and the intersections maintain existing 10 foot wide lanes. We wanna keep it there. Uh, it's a safety issue. So we wanna make sure we have enough room for the the uh, vehicles to make that turn. So if this was built today, this rendering, generally speaking, is what that corridor would look like at this location. So keep that picture in your mind. So once we go out to construction, get this thing built, and there's gonna be the try and true and construction process and noise and disruption, and everything that you know goes along with building a project, uh, really much anywhere in any city, is this is the picture to keep in mind once it's all said and done. So next steps. Um, we, we've taken some time to come up with the four alternatives, make sure we've crossed the T's and dotted the I's on those alternatives. Uh, gained and garnered input from the public at large. We want to make sure we hear from everybody that uses this trail, uses this system, uses the, the roadway, because uh, it is a, you know, it's a, it's a highly used roadway. Uh, we've met with the Bikeway and Walkability Committee on February 5th to go over those alternatives, and then we met subsequently to that at the first public meeting, uh, which was a great meeting. Uh, and then from there, we took all the feedback and it took some time. And obviously, uh, as we all know, our lives changed. So things slowed down. Uh, we needed to take a breath. And that's what we're doing. So uh, <clears throat> it's tough. It's a tough time right now. But things must progress. We must go on. So here we are. We're here for the second meeting to discuss uh, this project. In, in great de greater detail than we did at the first meeting, and to continue on our feedback with the public, to get more questions coming in, more feedback and responses, and to really polish this alternative, so we can go forward and actually get this uh, this this product built. Uh, the other component of this job is this whole corridor is being designated uh, up to a certain distance width for an underground district and that item is heading for city council uh, on September 15th to discuss that that underground district with the recommendations to adopt the resolution so that's coming up and, and that's that's a big component as well job as you all know on that uh, in that area uh, you see all the power poles so the purpose really of this underground district is to take all those power poles 
uh, with all the utilities, you've got several utilities that, that uh, you know, lease or are hanging on top of Edison's uh, poles and to take all that and put it underground. Steve, that undergrounding could be actually uh, the first week in October. We're just finding out that there needs to be more notification. So it'll be in October. Okay, so that's, so that, so that's going to October? Yes, first meeting. Okay. Okay. The okay. correction on uh, this is going to go to October. Uh, so next steps, uh, we need, still need to coordinate with Edison on the utility undergrounding, uh, which is a task in itself. Uh, and then we got to go through the environmental review and documentation as part of the subsequent to the preferred alternative. And then finally, so all that's still pending, but uh, those dates on the screen, you know, spring of 2021, still a, a vision and reasonable schedule to get the final design completed. And then as far as construction, uh, the city is applying for several grants ATP and with the desire to receive those funds and to assist with the funding of the project. Um, and at the same time, looking at uh, the underground uh, funding that comes from the Rule 20A from Edison to assist the funding for the undergrounding component of the project. So with that, um, it's so uh, Steve, at, at this time, you know the you know Mayor and Councilmember Reynolds, as uh, members of the Bike Committee, um, you know if they have anything to add. Um, or any comments, and then we'll open up for questions. Thank you, Mr. Sadharaman. Uh, thank you, uh, Steve. That was a great presentation. And thanks for such community engagement, everyone coming out tonight. Uh, I'm Katrina Foley, Mayor, and I know that what we as a council really care about is your input, your insights, uh, your preferences. We are really excited about the, the number of participants, not only in this call, but at the prior meeting. Um, of course, safety is our, our biggest priority. And uh, this project has been pending for many years. I know Mr. Seth Raman has been uh, listening to me push for this project for many years, some version of this project so that we can get bicyclists and pedestrians safely down Adams so that we can beautify Adams and so that we can underground those utilities and create some consistency uh, on the wall there. Uh, so those are all priorities for us, safety being the top priority. So thank you all for joining us and we look forward to hearing your important feedback. Councilmember Reynolds, do you have anything to add? Uh, nope, nothing to add. Just eager to hear uh, input. Um, I think many folks on the line know I've gotten um, much, much more involved in active transportation, and I think that um, stems a lot from the uh, very different experience um, I have as I've started to bike more around the city and um, fully recognize that it's um, those of you who walk and bike on these streets um, have really important insights um, that that we want to make sure the design team here is here. So please don't be shy. So that uh, we'll open up. I see Councilmember Mansour has his hand raised. So okay, did I unmute there? Yes. Okay. Um, well, first of all, thank you, uh, thank you, Raja. Thank you, staff. Uh, thank you, everyone on the bike committee. Uh, everyone in the, in the public who has provided input, and as has been said, many of us have been asking for this for a long time. I know I have. I've supported this, wanted this, and I've definitely heard from the public. So sometimes the wheels uh, turn slowly, but it looks like uh, they're finally uh, going in the right direction on this project. Uh, so I'm grateful for that. Uh, I like uh, uh, alternative three. Um, yes, yeah, safety is important. Also, like all the extra landscape, uh, the more of that, the better in our city. And uh, a quick question, uh, Rule 20A, is that the what we're pay on our electric bill, uh, Raja? Is that what we're seeking to fund this through the next project for, for that? Some, basically, it's already like it's not money we have to go out and find. Um, so, Councilmember Mansour, the Rule 20A is, is 
is uh, somehow, I mean, comes through the rate payers um, right. and money gets accumulated into Edison account and uh, city council through a resolution uh, have a public hearing and, and adopt uh, a street and we are recommending Adams for that one. Um, there is a limited amount of funding that's right now available. We think there will be about three and a half million dollars. So it might not fund this entire reach, but it will give a good start. It, it might go up to, we are hoping it will go up to Placentia, uh, from Royal Palm up to Placentia. Uh, and then phase two would be the following, you know, reach from, from uh, Placentia towards the, the, the West End. So. Um, so we want to get started with whatever we can with that uh, funding um, and, and move forward. So you might see the project all three uh, is the one that we are recommending, but you might see that being implemented in phases too. So you might see the alternative three improvement up to percent initially and then in the, in the next phase we'll have the other part done. But what we will do is instead of not doing anything, there will be some level of bicycle improvement even on the other section. So it'll, it'll just be phased. I hope so I, I know, that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I hope I answered that. So, so the funding is, we'll use all the funding that's available, but we know that it's going to be only three and a half million dollars. And it's, uh, it doesn't cover the entire, entire reach. Okay, uh, you, no, it does answer my question. Thank you, but you mentioned, uh, I saw the, the list of dates on there and uh, construction. Um, so if construction starts in 2021, we think it's, it might be done in 2022, or is it more, as you mentioned, that there could be other phases? It could actually take longer than that. It could take longer. So the construction, we don't have funding allocated yet. Um, as you know, we are applying for grant funding. So, so the Edison undergrounding is only one, one portion. And from what we are hearing from Edison, which you know, we, need to, we need to clarify more, that it might take them two to three years to get started even the undergrounding phase. So, because they have to go through the design and they, so they have their own process, which we are going to work with them to expedite as much as we can. And we'll use all your support to, to work with Edison on that one. Uh, so, so it, Edison is going to be the key in this, uh, in this whole uh, puzzle. So we want Edison to be done so we can put our bike infrastructure. Right. Well, thank you again, Raja. Thank you to everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. So we'll move on to uh, Cynthia McDonald, our uh, chair of the bike committee. So, so other than if you, if you can lower the hand. Go ahead, Cynthia. Uh, have you unmuted me? Yes, okay. Hi, yeah, I'm Cynthia McDonald. I am chair of the Costa Mesa Bikeway and Walkability Committee. I, I wanna really thank staff for bringing this project forward because uh, this is um, not only a beautification project, um, something that is going to make it much easier for people to get out and use uh, Adams as a method of alternative transportation. Um, there are a lot of uh, commuters on this route. This is a regional connection, it's a connection to the uh, Santa Ana River Trail. And uh, when you have the winding sidewalks with utility boxes and, and whatnot in the way, it makes your commute very difficult. So it's a very important project to cyclists in the city. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. So as, as you can see in this picture, the, the picture, the lower right hand picture is actually Arlington Drive. If you go on Arlington, it's, it's really beautiful. And this is kind of uh, what uh, Adams could end up uh, looking like in this picture here. Uh, Councilmember Guinness. Okay. Um, I thought other people had their hands up for me, but um, regarding the undergrounding, there's a reference there to an undergrounding district. So will the undergrounding extend beyond just the street into the neighborhood or will it be confined just to the street? As I understand, the undergrounding would be the, the, actually the street, but it also includes uh, from, from, especially between Royal Palm and Placentia, the, there are overhead lines that go straight to people's homes. 
exactly so uh, so it, 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 it includes getting the power underground into their home too so it'll reroute the power to make sure that it gets into their uh, meter steve let me answer if, if i'm not answering it right uh, uh, well I'm, I'm interested in the financing of that will the yeah. adjacent homeowners and no. other property owners be asked to participate financially or will we pay he'll for be, all that he'll be part of that uh, process so they won't be paying for that oh, okay because i thought we don't want to burden the homeowners yes they won't. sort of happen to be there exactly so, so it's basically getting the power because it's underground so the power has to come underground to their home exactly yes um and then as you know the trees have become somewhat controversial or the tree removal and um as someone who drives adams regu regularly you you've had me mention adams several times with the the state of the pavement and so forth and it's a shame that it hasn't been walkable for all these years really especially on the one side and um but there is some concern about the loss of the trees. So number one, are all of those trees that are in the sort of inset wells where the, where the wall actually um, has a little dip towards the homes, are those trees on public property or private property? And will those trees all be removed? And there's concern about, um, it would be what is in this picture, the left-hand side. Um, and then, have we done bird surveys? How are we going to address that? Because that's become the new topic, as you may know on, on social media, what's gonna to happen to the trees and what's gonna to happen to the raptors? So, uh, you know, th those will be part of the design. So we have to evaluate uh, the trees, uh, the location of the trees with respect to the, the street work. So if, if, if the, you know, depending on, the, and also the condition of the trees. If we have to remove a lot of the root system during construction, then of course we have to look at uh, removing. We will definitely be, I mean, this, this area will look a lot different. We will have a lot more trees than what we will be removing, even if we remove any trees. So, it, and, and, and as I mentioned, it's all the bird, the, the bird surveys, those are all standard procedures and they will be incorporated as part of our, our specifications if there are any removals there have to be those surveys done and and make sure that uh, we are not in the nesting season so so we'll evaluate all that during the design phase at this time we, we just have a, a, a conceptual plan of uh, how, what the improvement should be and then when we design we'll we'll know exactly how Okay, because you know how it is sometimes, well, it's too early to talk about it, and then later it's, well, we already are done with that phase, so you want to make sure you get it in early. Um, and no, I, I, I that. recognize that eucalypts can be hazardous as well, too. Yeah, so we're not going to remove trees before the project begins. Okay. Thank you. But I'm looking forward to this. We should have put in islands when we last re had a major rehab years ago. Yes. I will lower my hands. John, and you. Good evening, Raj. Just thank you very much for uh, working on this project. I uh, really appreciate it. So my name is John Merrill. I'm a former member of the Bikeway Walkability Committee. And I had a couple of, I have one comment, two parts. The first part almost an answer, but I didn't get quite a, uh, the answer that I would like to hear. And that is, uh, you know, I've been involved in a couple of title or Rule 20 projects in the past. And I seem to remember that there's the ability when you create a, the, an underground district that the city has the ability to levy funds. And what I want to make sure we're hearing is that this resolution will not will not give the city the ability to levy funds in the future for the portion that can't be covered by the three million dollars. And then the second part of that question is the portion that can't be completed with uh, the underground uh, underground can't be completed is the plan then to default to alt one which is basically a restripe and 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 probably a slurry or a microsurface um and then leave that at as that until that such time or is it another alternative that you're looking at as far as another interim can yeah 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 john you're breaking up i'm not sure if it's my computer or my internet or 
Steve, we can hear you clearly. Steve, you want to take this question? Yeah, I mean, so uh, first part of your question in terms of the leveraging, I believe I don't I haven't seen the resolution, but uh, that shouldn't preclude you from using the funds that come in uh, in your CIP, et cetera, uh, to look at the area uh, for future funding, uh, which is obviously coming in uh, per year from Madison. So right now they have in their, what I call the bank, uh, which is distributed to each city within the region. And I believe the number was three and a half million dollars. It's currently al allocated or earmarked for uh, the city of Costa Mesa. So still, the, the three and a half includes um, using some future monies too. We, we yeah, can use, there is. We, we can use up to four four years of funds. So including that is three and a half million dollars. Yes, that's correct. You can you can dip into the future uh, revenues that are uh, you know amortized, if you will, that come in uh, per the allotment that comes in from the percentage. Uh, so that is an option that has been talked about with staff and with Edison. Uh, and then the second part of the question is that this project, I think Roger mentioned it earlier, uh, can be phased. So let's just say that you go from Palm to um, Albatross for the undergrounding. Uh, if, if that's where the funding leads you to get, then that could be achieved in a phase one component of the project. Uh, and then the phase two would obviously be from that point forward. Uh, so there are, there are ways to get alignment with the funding with Edison, as well as the funding that comes from the grants for the project. Uh, and all that's gonna transpire obviously in the next couple of years, because uh, it has to obviously, because this project is, uh, needs the funding from ATP, uh, he's the revenue coming in for the undergrounding from Edison, and that's the alignment, if you will. Uh, I would think that uh, going forward with the alternative three in that fashion, because uh, you always you can always go back to your other alternatives at some point in time if you reach an impasse. Then, but the city's desire is to do something with this corridor, regardless, right? So it, it's it's it, it can be phased. And if it's if it's logically phased, you can do it where you're not taking out things you put in. Uh, so there is an opportunity to, to phase the product uh, with the available of, availability of funding uh, within the time constraints of the grants, et cetera. So hopefully I answered your question. All right, let's move to the next, Mr. Uh, Ibarra. So I just want to ask, why does this project stop at Royal Palm Drive? Like the, that one section is probably the busiest and it's probably one of the most important for us cyclists. I was just at the Bikeways and Walkability Committee meeting and I heard that there was gonna be bikeway improvements on Adams between Harbor and Fairview. So that's great. And then this whole section, that's great. But then there's just that one tiny part between Royal Palm and Harbor Boulevard that isn't covered. So is there just not gonna be a bike lane? Are there not gonna be any protections for the cyclists who just came in? What's going on there? It's, um, it's mainly the, the right of way. Um, so as you go west of uh, Royal Palm, if you look at the street, um, pretty much uh, there is no room in that section to provide a bike lane without taking away a, a travel lane. So that's why at this point we don't have uh, that segment as a, as a bike lane option. Um, so it's, it's considered as a bike route at that location between, between uh, Royal Palm and, and Harbor. In the, in the other meeting, the bike meeting I mentioned, even the section between Harbor and Fairview it's likely that the section between Harbor and Peterson Place, the first uh, uh, intersection, could be the same way. We may not be able to provide a bike lane because of the limited um, roadway width, and and east of Peterson we can we can pick up more uh, space. 
So, so that's the reason. It's not uh, you know we don't want to provide. It's just that uh, we have we don't have any any room in that location. Okay, I just want to say for all of the students at OCC, Costa Mesa High School, Costa Mesa Middle School, and Davis Magnet School, hopefully, eventually, there will be a bike lane there. My second question is how, uh, will there be any improvements for bicycles trying to make left-hand turns? Uh, for example, at uh, uh, Placentia and Adams, I know that there's a bike lane going north. Is there gonna be maybe a bike box to allow bicyclists to turn left to head towards the Santa Ana River? Um. Again, that's something that needs to be uh, designed. Uh, during the design process, those kind of improvements will be identified. Okay. I think it's, it's a good, definitely a good, good improvement to have. Ralph? Thank you, Steve, for the presentation and for staff working this project. Uh, I'm, I'm also a member of the bike, bike committee, and so I saw the presentation to the bike committee I uh, also present at the February 26th uh, outreach meeting, and it was a good meeting also. Um, I have, you know, I, I've, I've lived close to Adams here for about 30 years, 35 years, first in Lower Birds and now up close to the fire station number one at Adams and Royal Palm. Um, literally, I was on Adams today on my bicycle. I try not to ride Adams very much on my bicycle for obvious reasons, but I do. Um, so this would definitely improve the safety uh, between the Santa Ana River Trail and um, Mesa Verde East Royal Palm. I have very similar comments to David's. Uh, we're spending millions of dollars, and I think at the February 26th meeting, I'm spitballing here, but I thought that with undergrounding, I thought the cost was around five to six million dollars for this project. So we're spending millions and millions of dollars on this project. It's a huge improvement to that mile, mile and a half portion of Adams. And then we heading in, in on the west, it's great because it takes walkers and cyclists to Santa Ana River Trail, which is a major regional bike trail within Orange County. But then you head east. You get to Mesa Verde Drive, and the beauty and the protected bike lane stops. You would have a normal class two unprotected striped class two bike lane between Mesa Verde Drive East and Royal Palm, and then all hell breaks loose. You try and go east uh, past Royal Palm, and as David said, there's there's no there's nothing there. It's a class three, which means a bicyclist could take the lane. They would be insane to take the lane to do that. And I just challenge the staff to to. Uh, do some more thinking there. I know it's a huge issue uh, with the right of ways, but it just seems a shame to spend millions of dollars for a mile and a half and then dump everybody off to no man's land at Royal Palm. At the, Roy at the uh, February 26th meeting, I know there was one or two students from OC. And as David mentioned, you've got students going down, coming there from, uh, from the West. They have no way of getting east of Royal Palm without jumping on the sidewalk or taking their life in the hands, staying on Adams. And um, I just challenge the city to say, what can cut, be done for that 200 yard stretch between Royal Palm and Harbor? Also because as David and Raja mentioned, plans are to improve east of Harbor on Adams to, to get to OCC, Peterson Avenue there, another quarter of a mile, half a mile or so. So it seems like some improvements are being made from the Santa Ana River Trail to Royal Palm, then there's nothing, and then some improvements east of Harbor to OCC. So I just, I, again, just challenge the city of what can be done in that 200 yard stretch. Um, and also, Steve, maybe you answered this question or the view, the, uh, the uh, schematic answered the question, is there a grade differential between the bike walk lane uh, trail and the, uh, the travel for the cars? Is there a, is that the same grade or is that, is the sidewalk bike lane elevated from the uh, street? Yeah, they'll, they'll put a curve there, so you'll have you know the differential, whether it's a six-inch curve or eight inch curve, it gets to that uh, new, that uh, tenth shared. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you again. Thank you. And and Ralph, you know, I appreciate those comments. I you know, it's over time. I, I'm I have a feeling we will get there. I think I think this is a good start for the project, and I'm I'm thinking once we have 
this project done and you'll have the four or five improvements also being done, you know, there may be changes in traffic patterns too. And, and even after the pandemic, we'll see a change in traffic patterns. So maybe there are opportunities that might come up down the road. So, so those are definitely uh, options to be on the lookout for um, down the road. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. Donna Lynn. Hello, my name is Donna. Um, I live on Adams with my, the, uh, we, uh, back up to Adams right at the bridge. There's about four or five of us of our homes that do that. And so I have two questions. Number one, uh, a silver lining to COVID is the traffic on Adams has been awesome. We can actually get home at a, a decent clip. Usually traffic backs up to about Harbor. And what's happened in this last couple of years is with ways or whatever, cars are zipping through the neighborhoods coming around Baker, Geisler, and Mesa Verde. So I don't know if as we kind of, I love it that we're putting the islands and things that slow traffic down, but it will also create other traffic patterns through the neighborhoods. So I don't know if we think about speed limit signs or uh, bumps or any of that kind of stuff. I just want to throw that out there. Um, my second topic is the if we could consider speed limits for specifically 18 wheel trucks in the evenings coming up Adams, uh, we have a number of grocery trucks, large trucks that just fly down Adams over the bridge into Huntington and, and the other way. And with the joists on the bridge, as well as the weight of the truck, the vibration is really quite incredible. I have the cracks to show you if you'd like to see them. But the noise, the vibration, uh, I think if those trucks just came down a few miles per hour, I've seen it in other places, if we could consider like you know, a truck speed limit, that would be totally cool. Thank you. Steve, anything to respond on that or does it look like comments? No, I, I, I agree with you in terms of the, uh, the positive takeaway on the uh, current situation that we're facing. So traffic uh, has definitely been reduced uh, in some cases 50%. So, uh, you know, let's just see if that positive continues on and there's more of the zooming and uh, uh, people are, are working from home kind of atmosphere. Because that's what basically what you have. You have people working from home and that might become a new norm. And so your traffic counts uh, that you're seeing pre-COVID might uh, be reflected in that, uh, the new norm. So. Mr. Devin C. Hi, everybody. To piggyback on Donna's question, Adams is a busy street and loud enough. And for the homes that are close to the Adams Bridge, uh, the expansion joints really increase the noise ex exponentially. Is there anything we can do about the expansion joints in the project? Yeah, sure about that. Steve, uh, Steve, you wanna answer that? It's uh, it's it's uh, just just look at that. That bridge is actually county bridge, uh, but we need to work with county on on that expansion joints to see if they can add anything to make it better. Anything anything to add to that, Steve or Matt? Okay, we'll move to. Mr. Freindel. Okay. Yeah, the question I've got is the added sidewalk that you're going to put on Adams between Mesa Verde East and Mesa Verde West on the north side. The sidewalk that doesn't exist now that you'll be putting in. Uh, what are you going to do about the safety of the wall and its height currently as compared to it being a short wall on Adams as Karen uh, uh, has a decline in its um, altitude and Adams stays high, whereas you get closer to Mesa Verde West, the wall becomes very short, less than six feet. In most cases, less than five, and some less than four. What is your plan to deal with that wall that would ensure safety for the homeowners? Bart or uh, Steve? 
I, I, I can answer that. Uh, the only thing that I'm not aware of or, you know, with that particular area is, is the wall in the rights of way or is the wall a private wall? So that's the only thing I don't know in terms of the configuration. Well, this would be the wall that's on the screen right now, whereas you see it on the left-hand side of the screen. It's on private property. Yeah, so that, that just, I think the city got received comments relative to the wall and the configuration. So uh, in this design, we can look at those wall features. Uh, but again, if the wall is on private property, we have to be able to go to those individuals and it's it's more of a right away issue than it is to go in there and just go ahead and address the wall uh, as part of the product. So that, that's the only difficulty when we're dealing with the walls is that the walls are privately owned. Then why would you want to add a sidewalk that doesn't currently exist? It's within the rights of way. What's that? It's within the city's rights of way. Oh, do you want to answer that? So, um, yes, thank you, Raja. So we, we heard the concerns at the last meeting that uh, there was an interest in looking at options for the wall. We will continue to explore options and alternatives. And uh, before uh, the plans are finalized, we, we will be presenting those options to city council for uh, their consideration to see what would be the best option that we can implement. Uh, and with that, it will be a company with uh, uh, estimates of what each one of those options would cost to do that. At uh, this time, we're looking preliminarily at some concepts and alternatives that uh, would be relatively inexpensive, such as uh, adding uh, planted material to make it green, um, to make it homogeneous with both sides by either um, adding a plaster or some other type of finished material to make it look even. But in regards to the height, height of the wall, we may not be able to work with the existing walls to add the extensions and that will become a little more challenging. We will look at all the options and present that in the future. Yeah, the reason why uh, the walls are designed for that height, we could look at non-structural items uh, that could be used to increase the height. I mean, for, um, like it was done for other sections and, and make sure that it's painted in the foundry. So, so there are ways to work with, with that. So as, as Mr. Mayer mentioned, um, We'll present all options. We'll consider all options and uh, and go from there. This time, I see uh, Mayor Fully again. I just wanted to address the issue of the wall. Um, I. I particularly uh, understand the issue of the wall. I know we have some speakers who are here that we've assisted with making sure that their wall wasn't short um, so that we could protect their, their homes. And I do think that that's a priority for some of us on the council to make sure that we have not only uniformity on the wall there, because right now, you know, it's just a hodgepodge, but also so that we protect and we provide privacy. There's a whole variety of ways we can do that. We're gonna look at all options. And, and I think our expectation is that those options will be presented to the homeowners and to the, the people who live on that uh, side before they come before any other governing body. So we definitely will be looking at that. That is an important part of this project, at least from my standpoint. Again, I think there is, um, Ms. Lynn, do you have anything or is this from before? Yeah, I just wanted to, another kind of a, a line item besides a, a um, speed limit for trucks. Along the bridge, as you go to the bridge, on both sides, um, the homeowners were kind of exposed to people walking between the bridge and our walls to get down into the river. And it's always been difficult to do anything about it because it, there isn't a place to anchor up like a fence. And I know my neighbor who's also on Zoom, they've had actually people come into their yard. And so we've worked with the police on that. Um, but I just wanna kind of put that out there as maybe a seed as a, an, you know, a, that could benefit from this. I know Bart and Alan and Katrina helped us with our wall when we built that wall. And so it, I know it's a thing, but um, I wanna throw it out there. Thank you. 
Right, thank you. With that, I, th I think we looked at, uh, so uh, Jennifer, uh, Ms. Rosales, if there's anybody, any other question that's left unanswered in the chat? Um, yes. It looks like there are a few, many of the questions were answered in the chat. So um, the first one that hasn't been answered looks like um, at one time, the plan for the side and water pipes was to come down Adams from, from Huntington Beach, which would mean tearing up Adams. Is that still in the plans? So maybe um, um, Mr. Mejia, Bart, could you answer that one for us? I, I am sorry, but I do not know what the status of that project is. Yeah, I've, I thought they got realigned from my, this was uh, when Poseidon was initially proposed, they, they had that concept, but I haven't heard anything new. Um, from my understanding, it was realigned, it's something that we should uh, check with the uh, water district. Okay. All right. Uh, next question. Will the committee have specific meetings with the Longwood Greens community at the corner of Placentia and Adams to discuss impacts to the entrance and construction impacts? So um, we could definitely, uh, we definitely need, will be outreaching to everyone in the community. And at the time of construction, um, we would definitely be reaching out as well. Um, Steve or Raja or Bart, would you, anything else you'd like to add to that one? Okay. So I'd like to start. So there will be extensive communications with everybody who is affected by the project. And we will make sure that that coordination takes place and is clear to the contractor as well. Okay, another question is, will there be some opportunity for seating along the bike and walking area? So I think um, that's something to yeah. look at in that yeah. landscape area, maybe adjacent to the, uh, the path. Uh, Raja, would you like to add? That's definitely, I think something we could definitely look at opportunities yeah. for that. There are opportunities for, for seating, so we can look into that. Again, it's, uh, some of those are, are you know, resident driven too. So based on the requests that we get, we can address those. All right. It looks like I'm going through most of these. Okay. Um, this is, this is, this is, uh, as a resident backing up to Adams just under the bridge, can there be a strict, can there be strict construction hours? Uh, we'll definitely have um, very, we'll definitely will be strict on the construction hours for sure. Um, yeah, that's, that's a little ways off, but we, we, we definitely are, especially in our residential areas. Okay, looks like we're getting down to the end of the questions that... So, um, I think Councilor answered a question on... Um, if there are more questions, how how do they ask and how do they get answered? Um, but is there a website or any? Uh, or, how do how do they contact? Is there information down below that we can share? There is. Steve is scrolling down, and uh, Mr. Dalton, if you can add uh, on how else the public can provide input. Thank you, Raja. Yes. This is Kelly. We will be posting an updated survey. Uh, it should be live tomorrow. Uh, we wanted to leave the existing survey and the information on there current up until this meeting, but tomorrow that updated survey where you guys can provide any kind of feedback will be opened up. Yeah, and, and you know, we should have, uh, the, the link will be on our website, city website. All right, Kelly? The survey link? Yes, that's correct. And I'll uh, also uh, post and a direct link in the chat. chat. Yeah, let's do that. And Mayor Foley's question on whether um, uh, trucks are allowed, trucks are uh, are allowed on Adams. It's one of our major uh, arterials or so trucks are allowed on Adams. All right, here's another question. The um, Street View rendering doesn't show any lighting along the 
bike ped path. Are there some low lights similar to those on Harbor Boulevard bike path um, that are being considered? The lighting question. But Thank you, sir. Uh, for now, what we're looking at is to make sure that we have sufficient street lights. The street lights can be retrofitted so that they provide lighting for uh, not only the street, but also the uh, multi-purpose trail. And any areas that are deficient, uh, we're gonna look at the low level lighting to assist with the lighting for those sections. Are you any questions okay. on, uh, on, uh, from Michael Sampson on traffic signal at, uh, at Harbor Adams? The, the triple left turn lane on uh, Adams to Northbound Harbor, that was added about eight years ago. Um, and that project um, is actually a, a required mitigation for removing, uh, potentially removing the bridge on Giesler. Um, so, so there is a, so, so there are a lot of interrelated uh, issues between the traffic improvements we make and other decisions that, 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 that council made uh, many years ago. Um, we did not want to have a bridge connecting Fountain Valley and city of Costa Mesa on Giesler. And we have a, a, an active uh, petition with OCTA. It's, it's been going on for now 30 some years. And, um, but 15 years ago, we made an agreement with OCTA and other cities that we, we will implement some other improvements in lieu of that bridge. And that triple left turn lane that we have right now uh, at, at uh, Harbor Adams was one of the mitigations. So uh, we should not touch any of those until we make sure that the bridge is first deleted from the master plan. Um, and that evaluation is going to happen in 2025 after the completion of the four or five freeway project so so that's that's the reason why we have that triple left turn lane and, and it it does solve a big problem because we have about 1000 cars that turn left maybe more than that that turn left every morning at that location so it's a, it's a significant number of cars and and to make that function at, at a reasonable level of service uh, that improvement was made and again as i mentioned it, it wasn't it's not even our choice it's something that uh, is required based on on that other mitigation Okay, it looks like a, another one just came in. It says, uh, can a red left turn light be added from Placentia to Adams to make it safer for a U-turn for residents of Longwood Greens? Probably a trade traffic question. Can red left turn be added from Placentia to is it, uh, isn't, didn't we do this already? I thought, I thought, uh, I, I thought U-turns are now allowed from that location. Yeah, I thought that was done about a year ago. Yeah. All right, I think, um, thank you Kelly for providing that link. Um, so that's in the chat. Um, and as I mentioned, we will have uh, you know, definitely if you have any other questions, you can, you can reach out to, to us and um, anyone at the city hall, um, you can call 714-754-5343. So let me write down that number. And, and you can ask for Kelly Dalton, he's our project manager. So, so definitely uh, ask uh, that question, ask any question you might have and we'll respond to you, we'll get back to you. Again, thank you all for uh, attending this meeting. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you.